In today's tutorial, I'll guide you through how to make, use, and work with do files. So do files are basically the piece of text where you put down your code. And it's really useful that you keep a log of everything that you've done for replicability purposes. Also, if you make a calculation or coding mistake halfway through your file, you don't have to redo everything. You just change the one thing and rerun the code in one go. So by using do files, you can save what you've done before to make sure it's correct. You can very quickly alter your previous calculations and you can share your code and with others to make sure that they understand what you've done in your file. So let's hop over to the Stata folder. Here we have the same piece where we ended in our last tutorial. And you can make a do file by pressing this button here, new do file editor. You have basically a blank page. Now for the sake of speeding up this video, I have already made us a do file where I have some basic information up here. So when you previously used Stata, you could basically tap parts of code here and see what you've done. But if you close down the window, everything here is gone. So you might lose what you've done before. Now, if you make a do file, you can basically store your commands forever and just save them on a place. You can open, the back, open them back up again and you can rerun the piece of code. Now, a couple of things I'd always recommend you to do. And the first one is to make an init part of the do file where you basically specify all of the commands you're going to use later on and set specific things like the font type for a graph. You install Outrack 2 if you want to save regressions and you make sure that you have enough variable size on the file. And most importantly, you set a custom directive. This place allows you to set the location of the file manually. So if you want to have all of your files in one folder, you could basically select that folder and work from there. Now, what I'd like you to do is whenever you make a Stata of any sort, what you should do is the following. You should have always four folders. One of them is for all of your do files. Here's the one that I've just made, but you should have multiple do files. Each do file does one thing and only one thing, nothing else. With one, you open up and import the data. With the other, you clean the data. And with the third one, you execute your regressions that you'd like to do. But one file for each regression. And you should not make new variables to execute your regressions in your regression file. You should do that in your generation file. Then you can very cleanly separate what you're doing. And if you need to change it two years later, you still can because you know this file has this function. So what I'd like to change must be here. And if you make a mistake in coding, you can change it in that one file and then rerun everything else to make it work like that. You can also make a master do file that runs all of your other do files sequentially. So you don't have to individually open them, run them, etc., etc. Then have a raw data folder. Here's the place where you basically throw down your Excel, CSV or other input data from Stata. So you put it in here, then you import it, then you're going to do something with it. And then whatever you have left, if you'd like to save it, put it in a data file. And these you put over here. So the data files go in the data file folder. So you can see here's some information on trunks, which we don't need, should not be in the data file folder. And last, you have your outputs, a place where you save up all of your results that you'd like to have. So you put these results of the calculation into your outputs file. So everything is structured and clean. And what you can do if you want to output something is just change your custom directory and then change it back. What you can also do is use your custom directory very efficiently. So say you want to open up a specific file. What you can do is just basically use and then you have the variable name, file name. Say you want to use something in your data folder, data files, and then I want to use data set one, for instance, and you need to put the extension there at the end. And then you clear because you want to remove uh, everything else that's still open. What you could also do 
is make the file using the custom directory. So you'd have to go back one folder, which you do like that, which means go back. You go from the do files to the video one file. Then in the video one file, you open up the datasets file and open up set one. And this allows you to basically export this whole do file to another computer if you'd like to change the location. And all you'd have to change is change the custom directory here. So then you can change all of your files and their locations simultaneously, which is very powerful. So thank you so much for listening. I hope you found this useful and you now know how to use custom directories and do files. This will allow you to save your work, share it with others and quickly fix mistakes in coding that you've made before. Thank you for listening and until the next tutorial.